Here in Baltimore, Maryland, it's overcast and windy. And the poor old Baltimore Orioles manager, Earl Weaver, is down to his last 20-game winner, Mike Cuellar. The Pittsburgh Pirates are going with a pitcher they think has been their best the last two months of the season, a right-hander, Steve Blass. And so the two teams who started spring training last February are now down to their final game in a one-game World Series. NBC Sports, a service of NBC News, presents the seventh game of the 1971 World Series. The National League champions, the Pittsburgh Pirates, versus the American League champions, the Baltimore Orioles. Brought to you by Chrysler Corporation. Extra care and engineering. Your host today, your local Chrysler Plymouth dealer. By right guard, Annie Persprun, the one that's super dry. And by Philip 66. The Performance Company at Philip 66 is performance that counts. Hi, everybody. Kurt Gowdy of the NBC Sports Department. Chuck Thompson, the telecaster and broadcaster of the Baltimore Orioles, and Tony Kubek of NBC roaming the stands for you. The two starters are already warming up. Once again, it's going to be Quayar against Blast. We'll talk a little bit more about them. And we've had a late lineup change that uh, could be meaningful in this game. The Pirates have just moved Willie Stargell out of the cleanup position and dropped him to number six. They have elevated Bob Robertson, their first baseman, into the cleanup spot, and they put Manny Sanguian in the number five spot catching. Yesterday, and we've talked to a lot of writers, broadcasters, uh, baseball people who have followed the World Series for years, and they all agree one of the most dramatic World Series games they've ever seen. There were plots and subplots, a real thriller, that 10-inning victory, as the Orioles got back into it. So each team now has fought from behind. The Pirates over in Pittsburgh and Baltimore here, and we're down to the seventh game. And let's look at the starting pitchers now. Going for Pittsburgh will be the man that got Pittsburgh on the winning track in this series, Steve Blass, who pitched a brilliant three-hitter at Pittsburgh. Blass won 15 and lost 10. He's typical of the Pittsburgh staff. They're trying to do it with 10 and 15 game winners against all the 20 game winners the Orioles have and the Pirates have more than held their own. Starting for the Baltimore Orioles will be their 20 game winner, their crafty left-hander, 34-year-old Mike Cuellar, and Blast defeated him decisively in game three of the World Series at Pittsburgh. So it's Cuellar against Blast for the championship. Both bullpens will be loaded, as you all know. And now let's get the slants from Baltimore's Chuck Thompson. Well, thank you very much, Kurt, and I, uh, well, you know, you seldom get to this. The seventh game of the World Series is unlike anything else in sports. And I must confess, I think I'm a little more nervous this afternoon than I was in game one. And the Baltimore side of it, I think Baltimore fans are feeling that maybe yesterday they saw a little bit of a comeback from Baltimore. Not necessarily that they won the game. But things like they played their first errorless ball game. They were able to steal a base, take an extra base, and more importantly than anything else, able to shut out that outstanding Pittsburgh lineup for seven innings, able to do some of the things that brought them a championship in the American League, able to do some things that the Pittsburgh Pirates' outstanding pitching has kept them from doing throughout the first six games. Game seven of the 1971 World Series. I can't wait for it to start. And now down to Tony Kubek. With me, Brooks Robinson and Brooks, there's always pressure in the World Series, an all-star game, pennant-clinching victories or any place else, but the Baltimore Orioles and Brooks Robinson has never been in a seventh game. How are you feeling? Well, I feel fine, Tony. I'm a little excited, and uh, like to say, you can really feel it inside, and uh, just the crowd here will make you feel it inside, and I just hope we uh, have a good ball game. An entire season, playoffs, spring training, all boils down to this one game, the seventh game of the World Series. I guess that's the way it's supposed to be, Tony, but... Uh, it's going to be uh, an exciting ball game, and uh, we worked long and hard, and uh, we were number one last year, and we got a chance to be number one this year, and that's what we've been shooting for all year. Brooks Robbins, thank you so much. Good luck. Okay, Tony, thank you. Back upstairs. Good. Good luck. Good afternoon, Good afternoon. ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Baltimore's Memorial Stadium for the seventh game of the 1971 World Series. Here are the official lineups. First, the National League champion, Pittsburgh Pirates. Here is the manager 
of the Pirates, number 40, Danny Murtaugh. Batting first, playing second base, number 30, Dave Cash. Batting second, playing center field, number 15, Gene Kleins. Batting third, playing right field, number 21, Roberto Clemente. Batting fourth, playing first base, number seven, Bob Robertson. Batting fifth, catching for Pittsburgh, number 35, Manny Sanguin. Batting sixth, playing left field, number eight, Willie Stardjaw. Batting seventh, playing third base, number 11, Jose Pagan. Batting eighth, the shortstop, number two, Jackie Hernandez. Batting ninth, and pitching for the Pirates this afternoon, number 28, Steve Blass, warming up in the bullpen. And here are the remaining players and coaches of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Now, for the American League and defending world champion, Baltimore Orioles. Here is the manager of the Orioles, number four, Earl Weaver. Batting first, playing left field, number nine, Don Buford. Batting second, playing second base, number 15, Dave Johnson. Batting third, the first baseman, number 26, Boog. Oh. Batting fourth, playing right field, number 20, Frank Rabbiton. Batting fifth, playing center field, number 14, Merv Redmond. Batting sixth, playing third base, number five, Brooks Robinson. Batting seventh, catching for Baltimore, number 10, Elrod Hendricks. Batting eighth, the shortstop, number seven, Mark Belenger. Batting ninth, and pitching for the Orioles this afternoon, number 35, Mike Cuellar, warming up on the sidelines. And here are the remaining players and coaches of the Baltimore Orioles. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for our national anthem, which will be played by the first United States Army Band.
might have wondered the shot of Elrod Hendricks why he had the bat in his hand. He was simulating a batter as Cuellar warmed up. So Hendricks did not come out of the dugout to be introduced along with the rest of his Baltimore teammates. And another uh, oddity about the introduction, Earl Weaver gave a personal applause to each Oriole as they came out. I guess thanks, fellas, for the great season you gave me here. Win or lose today. Now the meeting at home plate. Six umpires again. Nestor Shylock will be behind the plate. You're watching Quayar warm up. He's taking extra warm up. He has trouble getting started sometimes. Ed Sudol will be umpiring at first. Johnny Rice at second. Vargo at third. Jim Odom umpiring the left field line. And John Kibler the right field line. The ceremonial first pitch today will be thrown out by our Secretary of State, William Rogers. Commissioner Bowie Kuhn hands him the ball. Al Rod Hendricks, the catcher of the Orioles, ready to receive it. Good arm. Very good, Mr. Secretary. Once more. Uh oh. I guess that's the Secretary's blooper pitch. Well, the seventh and final game of the 1971 World Series being brought to you from Memorial Stadium in Baltimore as the Pittsburgh Pirates meet the Baltimore Orioles. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC television network. All right, the Orioles taking the field. Chuck Thompson will set him up defensively. Let me say, though, that the wind is a big factor today. A strong wind blowing from first toward third. Balls that in the air to right field will be held up and the wind could cause problems on fly balls and pop ups. Mike Cuellar slowly moving to the mound and here to take you on the play by play for the first part of the game. The Orioles voice Chuck Thompson. Thank you very much Kurt and good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and again the Oriole defensive infield starting with Powell at first base and second baseman Dave Johnson shortstop Mark Belanger and the third baseman Brooks Robinson. Uh, the outfield will have Don Buford in left field. Merv Rettenlund the center fielder. And the right fielder Frank Robinson. Catching is Elrod Hendricks. And the pitcher will be Mike Cuellar. Cuellar who started game three in the uh, Three River Stadium in Pittsburgh and had control problems walking six. But if you were with us uh, through the warm up and pre game show you heard manager Earl Weaver make the statement that he would take from Cuellar again today what he got in Pittsburgh meaning that uh, through six innings uh, but two runs. And of course the Pirates broke the ball game open in Pittsburgh against Cuellar on a walk and error and then Bob Robertson with a booming home run. And that may have had something to do Kurt with manager Murtaugh's thinking uh, and the last minute shuffle in the lineup that knocked Stargell out of the number four spot and replaced him with Bob Robertson and moved Manny Sandian uh, from the number seven position or rather the number six position up to the number five spot and dropped Stargell down into the number six position. Well here is Dave Cash. Well, that's the season average and in this uh, World Series he is a 154 hitter with four hits and 26 trips and against Cuellar he went one. We're underway on the strike call. And speaking of strikes and strikeouts 
Cash in 26 at bats in this World Series has not struck out. He is the only regular without a strikeout. One ball and one strike. For those of you who did not watch Cuellar in game three, he possesses a full repertoire of pitchers. He has the good curveball. He has one of the better screwballs in baseball, a fastball, and a slider. To Brooks Robinson. And that will be the first out in the final game. Brooks Robinson playing the short hop or the offbeat hop. <laughs> he cradles the ball sometimes like that up into his stomach. Makes his throw. Well, the Orioles are off to a good defensive start. And here's Gene Klein, Chuck. Klein's a 143 hitter in the series, and that's his yearly mark, 308. And let's see, watch Rettenmund and left fielder Buford. It'll be the center fielder Rettenmund. And we have two down in the pirate half of the first inning. Though it was not apparent on that fly ball, keep in mind the point that Kurt brought out a moment ago. There is a strong 8 to 15 mile an hour win from first to third or from the right field foul pole to the left field if you prefer. And here is an indication of what the outfielders infielders will contend with on a ball that gets up high enough today. And speaking of problems to contend with, Baltimore has had its hands full and then some trying to handle Roberto Clemente. A 440 hitter in the World Series and a ball one. Clemente's game against a Cuellar in Pittsburgh saw him come to the plate four times with one base hit. And Clemente has done it all for the Pirates here in the 71 series. Two balls, no strikes. By that I mean he has a pair of doubles. He also has a triple. He has a home run. He has knocked in three. He has 11 base hits in 25 trips to the plate. curveball from Cuellar. Cuellar will change speeds on both the curve and on the screwball. The man he's been murdering outside fastballs through this series. And Cuellar has been feeding him that slow junk. Belanger the shortstop. They've got him. And it is a 1-2-3 inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. At the end of a half inning of play, the score is Pittsburgh nothing and Baltimore coming to bat. All right, Lou. Okay. Quickly, we'll take a look at the Pirate defense for you. First baseman Bob Robertson and the outstanding Norm Cash, Pittsburgh second baseman, Fernandez, the shortstop, and at third base, it'll be Jose Pagan. On the outfield will have Stargell in left, Rich Kleins, the center fielder, and Mr. Roberto Clemente in right field. And behind the plate, we have Manny Sanguian. And on the mound, Steve Blass. And in game three in Pittsburgh, he twirled a three-hitter against the Orioles. Frank Robinson had two hits in four trips. And uh, one of those was a home run, and that was the only run that Blass allowed the Orioles that day. And I guess when people think back over this 1971 World Series, I think a lot of people will say that Blass, perhaps more than anyone else, turned the series around. I believe I said Norm Cash for the... Uh, uh, pirate second baseman, excuse me, and I thank you for the correction. It is Dave Cash, of course. Thank you. 
And here's a fella, Chuck Buford, in the middle of everything yesterday. On base four times, made a big throw to second. He played some game. Well, he is a 250 hitter in the World Series. Went 0 for 4 against Glass in Pittsburgh. And the ball won. One nothing to Buford. Ball two. Two balls, no strikes to Buford, who will be followed by the man you're looking at now, Dave Johnson, in the on deck circle. The take on and the strike. Two balls, one strike to Buford. Buford has had five hits and 20 at bats in this series. Three of the five have been extra base hits, a double and a pair of home runs, and a 250 average against Pirate pitching in the series. The 2 1. Good breaking stuff from Steve Blass. Two balls, two strikes. Like a shake off and a couple, huh? The 2 2. And you heard him talking uh, earlier in the pre game show today that he intended to try and set up the fastball and the slider with that pitch that he just missed with, the slow overhand curveball that fills the count 3 and 2 to Buford. He missed again. A leadoff walk to Buford. In his complete game victory in Pittsburgh, Glass walked only two Orioles. Now he walks leadoff hitter Buford. To talk to the Pittsburgh players, their manager and coaching staff, second, they uh, number, number think 15, a lot of Dave Johnson. They all respect him. They, they think he's the most underrated player in the Baltimore lineup. A very high in praise of him. Kurt, I think I would agree with that appraisal of Dave Johnson. He certainly does not or has not gotten the credit that he has deserved as an Oriole. That was a fastball and a count ball one now to Johnson. His series batting average is 174, four hits and 23 trips. And when last he faced Flask in Pittsburgh, he was 0 for 3. And of course, he had a very big hit for Baltimore yesterday. That's the lead of Buford at first. Out of play, one ball, one strike. The on deck batter Boo Powell and the Oreo bat boy Jay Mazzo. I think all baseball players particularly the American League players and I think if you had the chance to talk to the Pirates in this World Series would have nothing but great praise for the Oreo bat boy Jay Mazzo. And this is his last year with Baltimore. He will be going to college and then not able to continue as a bat boy. It's been a great experience for the Orioles to have him as a bat boy and of course he feels it's the greatest thing that's ever happened to him. One ball, one strike to Dave Johnson. Mentioned uh, and uh, any baseball fan, of course, uh, only too well aware that the seventh game of a World Series, just like no other game that you're going to see, third, expect the, the unexpected. And here now, Boog Powell. Boog in his game against Blass in Pittsburgh was collared 0 for 4 in the series, 3 for 23, an average of 180, and he has knocked in only one run in this 1971 series. Strong has been the Pittsburgh pitcher. That's the curveball from Blast. Beautifully thrown in the strike call. You were a little bit late uh, joining us. Don Buford opened the game with a base on ball. Stayed there as Johnson popped out on the bunt. The Pirates were three up and three down against Quayle. Foul ball. Foul ball. 
That's the hardest ball Powell's hit in the series. He did have all of that, Kirk, but well out in front of the pitch. It was foul the second it left the bat. Everybody's waiting for either Powell or Stargell to break out. They haven't yet. Today could be the day. Well, if both of them break out in the same game, Kurt, we're in for a, a super afternoon. Two strike pitch to Boo Powell. Foul ball. You see the uh, the wrist bandages on Boo Powell, and uh, you know about his hand problem. And one of the uh, he does it a lot. Hurts it, re injures it, checking a swing. But truthfully, he does that right wrist more harm sliding than any other way. He just cannot avoid putting that hand down, and he gives it an awful jar every time he slides. Uh, the Orioles have given him all sorts of things to carry in that hand as a base runner, and he still puts the hand down. Two strikes to Powell. One out, Buford at first. Look now. One and two. Well, it has been strictly a home team World Series so far. The Pirates have won every game played in Pittsburgh. The Orioles have won every game played in Baltimore. And now time, Earl Weaver is on his way. And uh, there is something that uh, needs to be straightened out right now. And from my vantage point, I would not care to make a guess. But Nestor Shylock wants to see Danny Murtaugh perhaps or Verdon and it appears that it involves pitcher Steve Blass. I don't know whether it's something in the uniform. We've had examples of torn sleeves. Uh, white undershirt. Now Murtaugh and Blass. And there's something to do. Uh, Weaver pointed out something, and Shylock agreed with him. There's Earl Weaver going back to the Baltimore dugout. While they do this, we'll tell you the telecast presented by authority of Major League Baseball, intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Commissioner of Baseball is prohibited. I kept Kurt, looking I, at the mound, Chuck. I, I, you know, I wish I could make uh, the, the intelligent guess, but uh, I really can't. And I think perhaps the best thing to do is just wait until we get the information from downstairs, and uh, then we'll definitely know what this uh, protest uh, was all about. Now, Blass has asked for a couple of, you know, warm-up tosses. I wonder if... Weaver was arguing that he was off standing off the rubber. Then I had thought about this, but let's wait for verification. Alan Roth is getting some information for us right now, Kurt. And now Weaver is on his way again. That is exactly correct, Kurt Gowdy. That's what Weaver's protest was, that Blass was not in contact with the rubber. That he was pitching off the first base side of it, apparently. And uh, one foot has to be on that rubber. I'd like to, uh, perhaps a little later, we if uh, we have the opportunity to get Tony Kubek's uh, view viewpoint on this, I, uh, I'm trying to think of what possible advantage, other than being in front of the rubber, uh, where you would be, you know, uh, cheating a, an inch or two in your delivery. But it seemed to me that Blass was more to the first base side of the rubber than than in front of it. All right, here is uh, the one ball, two strike pitch to Powell. And it's two balls, two strikes. Kurt? And of course, it's a needling tactic by Earl Weaver. If he thought of any way he could upset Blast or the Pirates, he's out there to do it. So you see that Blast does work from the extreme first base end of the rubber. And the 2-2 to Powell. There's that curve, and he 
just has not been able to get it over consistently. Of course, he's only faced three men. Three and two now. That's his important pitch. He must get that slow curve over. When he does, he's really rough. That's his, really his changeup. Now, here is a good close-up shot, and uh, quite obviously, Blass is exactly where he is supposed to be in contact with the rubber. And this is the payoff. 3-2 pitch to Powell. Buford at first and one out. They hold Buford, and Powell strikes out. Now, now to Tony Kubek. Actually, what was happening is Earl Weaver was talking about a few things. He thought he was going to his mouth too much. He was not stopping with a man on first base, but mainly, they had noted in the first ball game, but Glass was digging a hole toward the first base side of the pitcher's rubber off the pitcher rubbing surface. They wanted him to be on that rubber. And of course, as Kirk mentioned, a little bit of psychological warfare to rattle Steve Glass for Earl Weaver. Back upstairs. Thank you, Tony. Thank you very much. Here is Frank Robinson, two down. And we'll watch Clemente, the right fielder. The wind is holding it up a little bit. Clemente there and makes the grab for the final out of the inning. Baltimore, no runs, no base hits, no pirate errors, and one man left. At the end of one inning of play, the score is Baltimore nothing, Pittsburgh nothing. I don't think so. Yeah. Well, that's okay. Well, no, he was working off the first base end of that, apparently, and I can't. I wonder if Tony knows if there's any dis, uh, any advantage to not pushing off the rubber. I would think it'd be a disadvantage. Lou? It, what it is, it's an advantage for a pitcher. It gives him a little bit better angle shooting for the outside corner oh. of the left-handed hitter. That's all it does, you know, and they felt he was too far over and they couldn't reach the pitches, the left-handed hitter that were on the outside part of the plate. Gotcha. The ball comes at you at a different angle from way over there. No, no. Well, in the uh, Pittsburgh half of the second inning, the number four hitter will be Bob Robertson. He will be followed by Manny Sangian, and then it will be Willie Stargell. Now, the original order that Danny Murtaugh posted had Stargell batting four, Robertson five, and Sangian six. He changed just moments before the game, and now it's Robertson four, Sangian fifth, uh, uh, and uh, Stargell six. I think he wanted to get Robertson up behind Clemente. Robertson with five RBIs leads the Pirates are knocking in runs in this series. And against De Cuellar in Pittsburgh, he went one for four, but it was a three-run home run. Yeah. One pitch and a line shot into the glove of Brooks Robinson. One away. And now Manny Sanguian. And Sanguian uh, against Cuellar in Pittsburgh had the good afternoon with two hits and three trips. And a, an outstanding series for this very fine young catcher, Manny Sandin. He is hitting 360 in the series, has one extra base and a double, and he's also stolen two bases. He always draws that line, as Bob Prince explained to you over in Pittsburgh, where he places his feet and his stance in the batter's box. He's digging right in alongside that line he drew for himself. Quayar to Manny Sanguian. And the foul out of play on the Quayar screwball. This fella murdered lefties during the year. He hit 345 against left handers, 300 against right handers. Well, that's the hard screwball from Quayar. Quayar, though, is not a normal left hander. When he throws that screwball, it breaks away from a right hander. Now the two strike pitch to San Guillen. Out of play. Behind San Guillen comes Stark. What a screw he missed.
One out, nobody on. One ball, two strikes to count to San Guillen. Curve ball. Five in a row now. Brooks Robinson staying in front of the ball. This is always the advantage of playing a ball in front of you instead of to the side. And he knows he's going against an excellent runner to first base, San Guillen, who made it a fairly close play. And now Willie Stargell. Stargell 4 for 20 in the series. And he was 0 for 1 against Cuellar in Pittsburgh, but he walked three times. And now the Cuellar fastball to Stargell. And another fastball. Strike two. Yesterday, Palmer got Stargell out on fastball. Pagan on deck. Two strike pitch to Stargell. Another fastball. And the Pirates are three up and three down. At the end of an inning and a half to score is Pittsburgh nothing and Baltimore nothing. Another chance for you around the world to meet Oriole coaches, first base coach George Staller and third base coach Billy Hutter. There are over 200 television stations in the United States, 450 radio stations, and 400 American Forces radio stations around the world carrying the 1971 World Series, seen in Taiwan, Canada, Puerto Rico, Venezuela, Colombia, Virgin Islands, Bermuda, Dominican Republic, Hawaii, Alaska, Mexico. United States bases in Germany, Korea, Manila, Panama. Here is Merv Rettenmond, a 217 hitter in this series. 5 for 23 and 0 for 4 against Glass in Pittsburgh. Shortstop Hernandez. One gone. One of the heroes in the Orioles' victory in game six is at the plate now, Brooks Robinson. His World Series average, as you see, right there. No extra base hits, but five runs batted in. Good fastball from Glass. One ball, one strike. Two balls and a strike to Brooks Robinson. Glass used to have trouble with his fielding. He sometimes came off the mound and would be hit in the rear by a line drive. They finally got him to balance himself when he came off the mound to be able to field going either way. And the ball three. Well, you saw an example in the Dobson game in Pittsburgh that being able to field your position could certainly help because there were many pirate shots back through the middle that Dobson merely, you know, he couldn't get himself in position to do anything about. Ball four to Brooks Robinson. And walk number two issued by Steve Blass.
The batter will be L. Rod Hendricks. He is hitting 188 in the series. Three hits and 16 trips. And his effort against the Glass in Pittsburgh, uh, he was collared in three trips. And that was a seasonal mark we just looked at. And you notice that Robertson does not hold with Robinson at first base. Good breaking stuff, strike. And the Pirates continue to play Hendricks, much in the manner they play Abu Powell with a man on base. The shortstop doesn't come over to the first base side, but almost. Bob Robertson. Uh oh. Brooks Robinson will hold at second. Error to the first baseman, Bob Robertson. Now watch this hop to Bob Robertson. He's been steady as a rock down there. He was watching that second hop. Looked like it skidded on him. It came up higher than he thought it would, but uh, Robertson played. He's going to stand out at first base when he checked for this play right here. Well, in the uh, first uh, five games of the World Series, it was the Baltimore Orioles who were, you know, making errors yesterday. The Pirates came up with their second. Today, they have come up with their only their third error in this series. Pass, beautiful pickup. He's got one at second. On the first, he pulled. No, he got him. He got him. Robertson maintained contact with the bag long enough to get Belanger in the double. So at the end of two full innings of play, the score is Pittsburgh nothing and Baltimore nothing. Tim Simpson with Bob Prince as we go to the top of the third inning in the bottom of the part batting order. Neither team has a hit yet. The Pirates committed an error, but as it turned out, it wasn't costly. Of course, the game is scoreless. And here's Bob. Jose Pegan standing in on the air, batted at 241. Has three hits in the series and two of them against Cuellar with a double and a single and a run batted in. He takes a fastball that sunk a little outside. Ball one. Cuellar has pitched perfect ball through the front two. Now the left-hander has his sign, starts his motion, sends a screwball and let up on it, taken for a strike, one and one. Pagan, a veteran of the World Series play, former great star, of course, with the Giants. Been with the Pirates now for several years, been a great bench player, and there's a ball pulled to third, and Brooks Robinson has it. He throws it across, one out. Now for Robinson, he's had one, two, three assists, and one put out. Or four changes. Here's Hernandez at 206. The Pirates show. Actually, he's been to the plate 15 times with four base hits. He has a run batted in, and he also has a stolen base. Well, he's out of the box, or is he? Hold on a minute. Foul ball. Just a foul ball. And it hit him in foul territory. One strike to Hernandez. And they want Shylak to take a look at the ball, see if he was scarred and in any way blemished on the bunt. You're just tuning in, one out, nobody on, top of the third inning, no score. It is out of play on the count now, two strikes to Hernandez. And Cuellar has maintained this sort of a pattern against the Pirates in the early innings. He has gotten ahead of the hitters and stayed there. Two strike pitch. Out of the ground foul is off uh, the first base side. About a two strikes to count to Hernandez. And Blast will be due behind Hernandez. Frank Robinson tracking in right field. Two down. 
Well, first Tuesday has changed. It's now chronologue, and we'll still examine uh, the new and unusual stories that make the headlines. Join Garrick Utley and watch chronologue this Friday night right here on NBC. Number 28, Steve Blass. Steve Blass, his lifetime batting average in the National League is 135. Must admit that Steve really had himself a pretty good cut. Strike one. We're going to have a day for Blast in Canaan, Connecticut, October 22nd, I believe it is. No matter what he does today, they think he deserves a day in his hometown. Dave Johnson, second baseman, and another one-two-three inning for Baltimore's playoff. At the end of two and one half innings of play, the score is Pittsburgh nothing and Baltimore nothing. He's out now, Lou. He's coming right out to the mound. Which one are you going to call this? This number? Hello, test. Testing. Oreos locker room. One, two, three, four. Right. <laughs> Oreos locker room. Microphone check number one. Three, one, two, three, eight. Coming right up here after this final game of the World Series, you'll see NFL football, either Cleveland at Cincinnati or San Diego at Denver. Right after today's World Series game. Mike Cuellar, who's usually shaky in the early innings, has been sharp today. He's retired nine in a row in the first three innings. And uh, that's something we haven't seen Pittsburgh do, is go down one, two, three like that in succession. Not since the first game, as a matter of fact, Kurt, uh, excluding the first game over the last five, the Pirates have had at least one runner on base in 38 of 43 innings, and now here they are three innings in a row, three up and three down. Pitcher Mike Cuellar. That's the average for Cuellar on the year. Ball one. Now, Blass, who walked but two Orioles in nine innings of a 5-1 triumph in Pittsburgh, has already issued two walks. One and one. Out of play. Top of the batting order, and that's Buford in the on deck circle. One two to Quayar. Blast picks up strikeout number two. with the outstanding on base percentage for Baltimore of over 400 and he opened uh, the ball game with a base on balls Blass uh, just came right after the birds and held Buford at first but look out behind him he's all right ball one One nothing to Buford. One and one. Dave Johnson, the on deck hitter. Do batter behind Buford. Two and one now. Appeared to be the curveball again from Blast. Look at that hole at shortstop they give Buford. There it is. 
the 2 1. Off Buford's foot, it is a foul ball, and what an effort from Steve Blass. Oof. Like the old gas house gang. Pepper Martin sliding into a bag. Well, if you'll not do it in the seventh game of the series, you'll not do it anywhere. Fine effort from Glass. The count two balls, two strikes to Buford. And Steve seems to be okay. And again, Buford has a full count. Three balls, two strikes, one out, nobody on, and no score in the last of the third. Game seven. Foul ball. hit. Stargell chasing for it. And uh, check that. Clemente chasing for it. And Buford has reached for the second time this afternoon. Clemente cut that ball off with that good speed. It had a chance of getting in the alley between uh, Kleins and uh, Clemente. And uh, Roberto got to it very quickly and held Buford to a single. Baltimore's first base hit. Here is Johnson with Buford at first base and none out in the first inning. He attempted to bunt and popped out to the pitcher, Blass. There goes Buford. They've got him hung up. And he is out at second base. He broke too soon, and the alert Blass just cut him down. Last time to Robertson. Robertson got rid of that ball quickly to Cash. Buford right into him. And let's take a look at it from this angle. He thought he was going to make his pitch to the plate. And Buford is out from the pitcher to the first baseman to the second baseman. Dave Cash bumped into by Buford. And uh, they came out to look at him. He was flexing his right leg. But he uh, appears to be all right. So that makes it two down now. And nobody on. The Pirates have had three men cut down on the bases in this series. And this is the first time the uh, Orioles have run into trouble on the bases. So with two down and nobody on, Johnson uh, waiting the first one from Steve Blass. Oh, what a fine play from Pagan. And the final out of the inning. Baltimore, no runs, one base hit, no pirate errors, nobody left. At the end of three complete, the score is Pittsburgh nothing and Baltimore nothing. This is a spare, number two. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. You want to check face? Right. Well, we go now to the uh, top of the fourth inning. At Memorial Stadium in Baltimore and the top of the Pirate batting order. That'll be Dave Cash, Rich Kleins, the Gene Kleins, and then uh, Roberto Clemente. Cash, Kleins, Clemente. Cash in the first inning was out on the ground ball to Brooks Robinson. Kleins skied to the center fielder Retman, and Roberto bounced to the shortstop. Mark Melanchthon.
So the Pirates now start the second go round against Cuellar. Strike one. Dave Johnson reaches. And now the Pirates have sent 10 up, and Cuellar has retired 10 in a row. Here is Gene Kleins in the first inning against Miguel Cuellar. He flied to center fielder Redmond. Had the dandy year at 308. Speed to burn. Oh, he can fly. Bunt effort, Cuellar. Fair hand. Hey, they got him on a nifty play from Powell. Oh, that was a fine pickup of what appeared to be a tough kind of a throw to handle. Now we've been watching two first basemen in this series who are very underrated fielders. Watch Powell dig this one out of the dirt. The runner coming right into him, a difficult play. Up he comes. Powell and Robertson. Add a measure of excellence to each of these infields. And what a great shot of that catch from Boot Powell. Here is Roberto Clemente against Cuellar on the first inning. He grounded to short. That is hit well. A Clemente home run, and the Pirates lead one to nothing. It looked like he had a break and pitch right over the plate. That's his 12th hit. He's one short now, tying Bobby Richardson's all-time World Series record of 13 hits in a seven-game World Series. He had a triple and a homer yesterday and a home run today. Let's watch his swing now. Look at him. Tee off. Everything in that 180 pound body whipping around this one he pulled the left center most of his hits have been the right. <laughs> Brooks Robinson. And that will be the final out. But the Clemente home run gives the Pirates at the end of three and one half. Now let's take a look at the Brooks Robinson play again on the final out to uh, retire Bob Robertson. Cutting in front of shortstop Belanger. And the recovery in the throw to first. And so at the end of three and one half innings of play, it is Pittsburgh one and Baltimore nothing. events through the years and the association continues with a prestigious collegiate basketball championship another World Series event that will be seen on NBC next March I noticed when Clemente went to his position and right he's got quite a rooting section out there in right field there are a few hundred Pittsburgh fans right above him and they gave him a standing ovation they have Pittsburgh banners and caps on out there and if he doesn't deserve one I'd like to find somebody who does that's a ball one to boot power there are a lot of adjectives you could use to describe Roberto Clemente. He just lets that bat and overall brilliance do it for him. In all departments of baseball, throwing, running, fielding, hitting. Let's see if it stays in play. Coming on is Pagan. Look out, and he could not get to it. And 
And as we have mentioned and have shown you, the Pirates over shift uh, on Powell, of course, gave Pagan a tremendous amount of real estate to cover in an effort to get near that foul ball. And about Pagan in game five, he played brilliantly at third base. And he's made uh, an outstanding play already in this series. So he has given the Pirates some real sparkle there at third. He had to come from about the shortstop's position or in the hole off of the foul ground in a chase for the Powell foul ball. And second baseman Cash is there. One away. And now Frank Robinson, who fly to uh, right fielder Clemente in the first inning. Number 20, Frank Robinson. Those are the figures on Frank Robinson in this World Series. Two home runs, two runs batted in. It'll be out of play. Strike one. Out of play. On deck hitter Rettenmund. So Steve Blass quickly ahead of the hitter Frank Robinson. Nothing in two. Here's his two strike pitch. Out of play. Both Blass and Cuellar pitching one hitters through the opening innings. The one hit off Cuellar, the home run by Clemente accounting for the Pirate. Beautiful curveball from Blass. And he picks up strikeout number three, his third strikeout. This is an important pitch for Blass. This is a slow curve, and he uses it as a changeup. He's having trouble getting it over in the first couple of innings. But he had Robinson way off his timing. Now, if he gets this pitch over, Along with a fastball he has in a slider, he's going to be tough. Here is Merv Rettenmund with two out, nobody on. And Chuck, all the Orioles have told us that Blast has had the best stuff of the Pirate pitchers they've hit against. Absolutely. 1-0 and to Rettenmund. The Pirates have scored first in five of the seven games. Here comes Pagan. What a pick up and throw. And the Orioles are three up and three down. At the end of four complete, the score is Pittsburgh one and Baltimore nothing. Yes sir. I'm not concerned about that really. It's sure they are that late. And I hope it'll get better. A reminder to all sports fans that in February 1972, NBC Sports will be in Sapporo, Japan, telecasting the 1972 Olympic Winter Games. Over 30 hours of skiing, jumping, cross-country, bobsledding, speed skating, figure skating, hockey. All the events that make the Winter Olympics so exciting. And you'll see it here on NBC. And as we were talking about the Winter Olympics in Japan, they just flashed on the scoreboard that the Baltimore Orioles will be leaving Wednesday for a month tour. Japanese professional baseball team. Well, we go to the uh, top of the fifth inning, and it'll be Manny Sanguian, Willie Stargell, and Jose Pagan against Cuellar. Out of 
Same Guillen in the second against Cuellar. Grounded the third baseman. And now Willie Stargell, the last time he faced Cuellar in the second inning, Cuellar just went right after him at fastballs and struck him out. But let's see if Cuellar changes the pattern against Stargell as he works on him the second time. Yeah, fastball low, ball one. Change curve and the count two balls, no strikes. Something that Stargell did not see in his first trip to the plate, a breaking ball. Ball three. Play are now behind to Stargell. And through the early innings, as you are well aware, the one thing Cuellar did was to stay ahead of the hitters. Now here on the top of the fifth. So he got ahead of San Guillen. He lost him on the base at the center and now trails three balls, no strikes to Stargell. Three and one. And I would think this would be a tough pitch for Cuellar to make to Stargell. Three balls, one strike. Nobody out. And San Guillen at first. Came back with a fastball. That was a good running San Guillen at first base. Pirates leading at one to nothing. Nobody out here on the top of the fifth. Three two pitch coming to Stargell. San Guillen holds and Stargell strikes out again. Jose Pagan grounded to third base in the third inning. Screwball outside. Base runner San Guillen at first. Now the one nothing pitch to Pagan. Belanger. Yes, sir. The call at second base is out. Belanger has unusual range. And he really gets over here in the hole. Hernandez made this kind of a play over in Pittsburgh. Look at that throw right there. Just in time. San Guillen argued, but he's there. Here comes San Guillen into the bag. Close play. So there are now two down in the pirate half of the fifth inning and Hernandez who fly to right fielder Frank Robinson in the third. Pagan at first base. Two out. Pirates leading one to nothing. Hernandez refused to chase that one. One ball and one strike. Those of you who watch Cuellar work in Pittsburgh, I'm sure will agree that he seems to be throwing many more fastballs this afternoon than he did in Pittsburgh in game three. And that 
fifth for the Pirates in their habit of fifth inning. No runs, one base hit, no Oriole errors, one man left. At the end of four and one half innings of play, the score is Pittsburgh one and Baltimore nothing. We pause briefly for station notification. This is the NBC Television Network. After <laughs> the last of the fifth floor, and a great deal of pleasure, I turn you over to NBC's Kurt Gowdy. Kurt, thank you, Chuck Thompson. Rick Rock, his first time. The Pirates have two hits. The Orioles. The lone hit, third inning, a single to right center. Last is one, he struck a three. Robinson chasing the outside. Nothing in two to Brooks Robinson. Allie Hendricks on deck, and then Mark Belanger. Club behind. We could add to uh, Kurt that they have always been right. A ball and a strike to Hendricks. Keep looking for him to take that outside pitch and try to go to left field with it or left center. There's a drive in the right center. Flamini going hard. Can't get it. Hendricks is coming for two. The throw by Kleins, and he's in there safe. He got that ball in the gap. Again, uh, we'll watch Clemente in right field. He did it. He was able to cut it off on the drive that was hit in there by Buford in the third inning, but this one he just couldn't get to. And Kleins right behind him. Then watch this good throw from Kleins, uh, even kind of off balance. And Hendricks reaching just ahead of him. Mark Belanger wrapped into a double play first time. Hendricks at second. One out. Pittsburgh ahead, one to nothing. Last of the fifth inning. Fly ball, straight away center. Finds backing up. Hendricks tagging at second. He's not coming. The throw comes into the shortstop, Hernandez. Two down, and Mike Player will be up. He struck out his first time. Looking around to see if his teammates are set. He said something to Bob Robertson at first base. Wow. 
One ball, no strike. Cuellar is not what you'd call a good hitting pitcher, Kurt, but he's kind of dangerous. He loves to swing, swings hard, and he can hit the ball with power. He had a grand slam home against the Twins, I remember, in last year. Ball two. Two and nothing to the opposing pitcher. Steve Blass. An emotional sort of a fella. Good clips. As he was in Pittsburgh, the 2 0 delivery, a score 2 and 1. Last walk, play on three. The 2 1 delivery, like 2 2 and 2 to Cuellar. And we're going to have some warm up action now in the Pittsburgh bullpen. Luke Walker, a left hander, loosening up. The first warm up action we've had today. Walker. That's a foul headed in back of the Orioles dugout, not a play. Hendricks going back to second with two away. They're estimating that the winner's share of this World Series will be around 20,000, 18 to 20,000. The loser will get around 14 to 16,000 apiece. A rich payoff. The 2 2 pitch. Quick three, he's out of there. And that's the fourth strikeout for Steve Blast. In the fifth, the Orioles no runs, one hit, no errors, one left. At the end of five, Pittsburgh one, Baltimore nothing. Pause now for station identification. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> he doesn't want to talk to me, he's saving his voice. Groundkeeper Linda Wilhelm with her little act at the end of the fourth inning. Rushing off Brooks Robinson's shoes. Third base. And here's a little brush off. <laughs> to uh, umpire Ed Vargo. Steve Blass leads off in the sixth inning for the Pirates. Fouls it away. Blass grounded out his first time. We'll go up to the top of the order and pick up Dave Cash and Gene Klein. Play on blast hooked up here in a brilliant pitching duel in a slate gray day in Baltimore. To the mound. One away. One swipe of the bat by Roberto Clemente is the difference right now in this game. Clemente homered over the left center field fence in the fourth inning with two down. That's the only scoring if you just joined us. Dave Cash is grounded to third, line to second. Number 30, Dave Cash. And the man of the week right now in Utica, New York, Dave Cash. Mm. 
Drag, he hasn't hit much in a series, but he's played his position brilliantly. Especially on the middle of double plays, getting out of the way of rolling blocks. Punches at fouls to right field. Nothing and two to Cash. We played the first five innings of this game in an hour and five minutes. Both these pitchers working quickly. Foul away. Way I like Palmer doesn't mess around on the mound. He likes to work in a hurry. Kurt, that uh, is something that George Bamberger, the Oriole pitching coach, brought with him. He likes uh, his pitchers to work at a good rhythm. He figures their concentration stays a lot better that way. One out, nobody on. Two strike delivery. Fouled again. And they talk about speeding up the game. The best way to speed it up is what Cuellar is doing and Palmer did yesterday. They really make a game move. Two strikes to Cash. A ball now, one and two. Brooks Robinson was expecting Cash to bunt on him today. And he hasn't yet, and he's got two strikes. Two and two. Cuellar, 34 years old, a native of Cuba. His teammates call him Crazy Horse. That's his nickname. Struck him out on an off-speed pitch. Little compares to the thrills of leading international circus artists and the excitement of the big top. Ed McMahon has your front row seat reserved for the Timex All-Star Circus Tuesday night here on NBC. Dave Cash just struck out for the first time in the series, so at least one regular now. For every regular in both clubs has struck out at least one. Nothing a one to Klein. Who has fly to center and bounced to the pitcher. One run, two hits for Pittsburgh. No runs, two hits for Baltimore, sixth inning. Two down for the Pirates and the base is empty. Two ball breaking away. Klein's had a great year against lefty. There's Clemente on deck. Cuellar's two strike pitch. Foul ball. This is Cuellar's sixth World Series start. He's won two, lost one in World Series competition. He led the Baltimore staff this year and starts complete games and innings pitch. Just under 300 innings pitch. One ball, two strikes. And he and Pat Dobson led the staff in shutouts with four. Two and two. Two away, nobody on. There's that flowing again. Two strikeouts that inning for Cuellar. Three up, three down for the Pirates at the end of five and a half. It's Pittsburgh one, Baltimore nothing.
on behalf of Major League Baseball, Bob Gibson of the Cardinals, Dave Roberts of San Diego will head a group of Major League stars on a tour of the U.S. hospital bases in Hawaii, Guam, the Philippines, and Japan. Greg Nettles of the Indians, Danny Purcell of the Mets will also be along, and the trip is sponsored by the USO with the cooperation of the Baseball Commissioner's Office. Don Buford has been on base six times now in his last seven times up. Yesterday, he had a single, a homer, a walk, and a double. Today, he's walked and singled. He's also reached base five times in a row in the two games. This is the top of the Baltimore batting order. And Steve Blast is through with the strike to him. Danny Murtaugh, his aide, Bill Burton. Lashes it foul. Two strikes to Buford. Well, we finally saw Murtaugh show some emotion yesterday in those late innings. He was very unhappy with the umpiring. He started to prowl that dugout. He's going to be up moving before this one is over. Very solid man, Murtaugh. A ball, one and two. One ball, two strikes to Don Buford. Pittsburgh ahead, one to nothing. Last of the sixth inning. Two and two count. Steve Blass once paid for ads in local newspapers in Canaan to try and save Little League Baseball in his area. He uh, thinks it's so important for youngsters. He went out and bought his own newspaper ads and urged the citizens to save Little League Baseball. Foul back. Two and two. That's Dave Johnson on deck. Game not quite, but in a similar pattern as yesterday's game. And the Pirates grabbed an early 2 nothing lead. Today it's 1-0. Oh, a hanging curve. A little high over that plate. The three and two count. Blast walked Buford in the first, walked Brooks Robinson in the second. He's not walked anyone since. Three and two pitch. Fly ball to center fielder Klein. One down. Dave Johnson has popped up trying to butt. Grounded to third. 0 for 2. Number 15, Dave Johnson. Just about everybody we talked to, Chuck, thought yesterday's game was one of the best World Series games they'd ever seen. He pops it up to the left side. Hernandez. Squeezes it for out number two. Third, I think it probably will be one of the greatest, but I'm sure Pittsburgh fans will still say that the final game in 1960 had to be one of the greatest World Series games of all time. A wilder game oh, in the ninth game. Mazeroski's homer in the ninth winning it. Unbelievable. Well, we had plots and subplots yesterday. Powell up, struck out, grounded out. In with a strike, nothing and one. The Pirates leading on Clemente's homer, one to nothing. That home run came in the fourth inning with two out, nobody on. Curves him away. We still have that shift on for Powell. And the outfield swung to right. The Orioles have two down. Base is empty. He wanted that one. One ball, two strikes. Three out of 25 in the series. Struck him out on that slow curve. Five 
strikeouts for Blast. The Orioles down in order in the sixth. At the end of six innings, the score, Pittsburgh one, Baltimore nothing. Crosby, Bob Hope, Dean Martin. Pretty good lineup of talent in any league. And each will host his own golf tournament that will be seen here on NBC early next year. Secretary of State Rogers in the blue suit, seated next to Commissioner Bowie Kuhn. Roberto Clemente will be leading off. And the Secretary of State, like many other fans, around the world applauding his World Series play. Clemente now has hit safely in every game of a seven-game series twice. In the 1960 series, he hit safely in every game. He's hit safely in every game of this series. Hank Bauer is the only other player in World Series history who's performed this feat. If Clemente can get another hit in this game, he will tie an all-time World Series record of 13 hits in a seven-game World Series. And there's a fly ball to center fielder Redmond puts it away for one out. Clemente had grounded out to short and homered to left. One down in the seventh. A little unusual for Clemente. He hit the first pitch. He does not often do that. Robertson. All right, Chuck. Here's Bob Robertson. Lined the third, grounded the third. Batting cleanup today. In a late change just before the ball game by manager Danny Murtaugh. who manages by the seat of his pants and does it very well, thank you. He goes on how he feels. Back two. Well, I'd like to have one pitch back in that game, the one he fed the many. That's the difference right now, one to nothing Pittsburgh in the seventh. strikeout pitch now. Struck out two in the sixth, another strikeout here in the seventh, and he had two strikeouts in the fifth. He has struck out six. Number 35, he has not walked the batter. Manny Sanguin is grounded out and single. And he's come up now with ten hits in this series. Next to Clement, he has the most hits. He lost the high one to right fielder Frank Robinson. And the Pirates are gone in the seventh. One, two, three. So we're coming up for the Orioles' seventh inning stretch with a score. Pittsburgh one, Baltimore nothing.
Right after this World Series game, coming up next on NBC NFL football. Either Cleveland at Cincinnati or San Diego at Denver. Stay tuned to NBC. All right, the Orioles fans have settled back down. Here's Frank Robinson, Merv Rettman, and Brooks Robinson. Steve Blass, who checked the Orioles on three hits over in Pittsburgh, has stopped them with no runs and two hits so far today. 29 years old. He was a pirate best pitcher the last six weeks of the season. He checks the swing and pops it up the cast. One down. Glass had a total of five shutouts during this past season. And he tied for the National League lead with Al Downing of the Dodgers, Gibson of the Cardinals, and Pappas of the Cubs. Oh, and he's right, and he can overpower the other way he's doing today. Rettman is grounded a short, grounded a third, 0 for 2. That's Dalrymple coming in from the Oriole bullpen. Ball one. You know, each World Series, Sport Magazine gives away a Dodge Charger to the outstanding player. Everybody's speculating now who it's going to be. You'd have to say that Clemente is out in front. Now, what if the Orioles rally and win? Do they give it to somebody on the winning team? Not necessarily. There's a foul ball back. In 1960, Bobby Richardson got the car, even though he was on the losers. Earl Weaver, the Oriole manager. Leonard and Dobson are in the Oriole bullpen, a pair of right-handers. Blast could be in there with his pitching performance over in Pittsburgh and again today. Two and one. But only once has a member of the losing team won the car. We'll see how it goes. That's Brooks Robinson on deck, and there are the two right-handers warming up in the Oriole bullpen. The 2-1 pitch. Breaking pitch over. 2-2. Two and two. out of the strike zone three and two three two pitch bounding ball to Hernandez the pirate shortstop right there with it and they're two down and Mr. Blast now has retired seven Orioles in a row in easy fashion. Brooks Robinson has walked and fly to right. One to nothing, Pittsburgh, last half to seven. Blast and Clemente have combined today for the Pirates. Bounding ball to Hernandez at short. To Robertson, and Blast puts him down again. Three up, three down at the end of seven innings in Baltimore. It's Pittsburgh one and Baltimore nothing.
We pause now for station identification. Into the eighth inning we go. The game move, moving at a rapid pace. That's Cargill, Pagan, and Hernandez face Cuellar. And you won't ever get much better pitching in a World Series game than this one. But Blast holding just the slide edge. Each pitcher's allowed only two hits. But Cuellar gave up a home run to Clemente. And that's been the difference. Ball one to Stargill who struck out twice. Cuellar has struck out six, has not walked the batter. Blast has struck out five and has walked two. The other fired hit was by Sangui in the single. We are behind Stargell, two balls and no strikes. Fouled away. In the last of the eighth, the Orioles have the bottom of their order up. We may be seeing Cuellar for the last time in this game, this inning. There's a ground ball to short. Gets by the line here in the left field. Stargill's on to lead off the eighth inning. A base hit for Stargill, the Pirates' third hit. Pagan is grounded to third, hit into a force play. Ball into him. Brooke Robinson at third. Boot pile at first. Defensing against the bunt. One and one to Pagan. You have Hernandez and Blast, the number eight and nine hitters behind Pagan. Nine years ago in the 1962 World Series, Jose Pagan was playing shortstop for the San Francisco Giants. He was a leading hitter in that series with a 368 average. Runner going. There's a fly ball to deep left center. Rutman chasing it. Drags it down. Stargell is being waved around. Here comes the throw, and Willie Stargell is cut off. Luke Powell cut it off. And Stargell, who is running on the pitch, scores all the way from first base. And Pagan has a double. And Earl Weaver is coming out of the Baltimore dugout. I will take a look at it again. Really unloaded on the drive. Well hit. Wind is helping to drive it away from Rettman. He'll juggle it just a little bit, as you see. Hits the cutoff man, Belanger. And now the throw to the plate is cut off by Powell. And I don't know. We'll take a look at Stargell again all alone. And the opinion is yours to make. Whether or not had he not cut it off, Hendricks would have had a play or not. Well, we don't see the cutoff in this view, but we've already showed it to you. And now we'll take a look at it again and watch Powell cut the throw off and then watch the position. Stargell, a couple of strides away or at least one. But a tough play, and the decision was to cut it off. Stargell had it beaten. And we'll never know. Never know. The Pirates now lead two to nothing. Pagan at second. Nobody out. They had Stargell running on that pitch. Hernandez tries to dump it and it's foul. Strike one. No team has ever won every World Series game in their own ballpark. 
The Orioles now trailing 2-0. They have a chance to set some World Series history, but they're behind right now. Baltimore won the first two games here and game six there. The Pirates won all three games in Pittsburgh. And no team's ever won four games at home in a World Series. Pagan at second. Eddie Water right-hander, Pete Rickard a left-hander. Uh, getting ready in the Baltimore bullpen. Two strikes to Jackie Hernandez. Fly ball to Frank Robinson. Pagan is tagging at second. He's holding Robinson's throw is in the Brooks Robinson. Early strong throw by Frank Robinson. And let's see now we have uh, Leonard now is the middle man of those pitchers. Watts on your left, the right hander. Richard on your right, the left hander. Leonard sits down. Steve Blast getting a hand for his brilliant pitching today. In Canaan, Connecticut. And I imagine you can shoot a cannon off in the streets up there right now. Everybody's watching his seventh game efforts today. He bounces it. Foul to Brooks Robinson. That's Pagan at second, one down. The Pirates have just scored again. They lead two to nothing in the top of the eighth. For that matter, Kurt, I doubt that there are many people walking around in the streets in Pittsburgh either. That's right. Quite a few here today. They were saluted, incidentally, on the uh, message board a little earlier. A salute to the Pirate fans for their, their very good team and their class baseball organization is what the message board said. That's by the Baltimore organization. Pagan at second. Two strikes to Steve Blass. Dave Cash is on deck. Taps it to Cuellar, who looks Pagan back to second and throws Blass out. Two down. Magic Kingdom of Walt Disney's World comes to life with help from Julie Andrews, Jonathan Winters, Glenn Campbell, and Bob Hope in a very special, special Friday night, October 29th, right here on NBC. Dave Cash is grounded out, lined out, and struck out. He hits it to Brooks Robinson. Fair ball. Brooks over to first. Low throw. Powell comes up again with a good dig out of the dirt. But the Pirates came up with a run on two hits, no errors, one left. At the end of seven and a half innings, the Pittsburgh Pirates two, the Baltimore Orioles nothing. He's standing in the dugout. I'm going to go down in just in case. Seven. Report your guard at once. And now down to Tony Kubek. We had some technical difficulties uh, getting the audio down there with Tony and Secretary of State Rogers. We apologize. And we're in the last half, the eighth inning. 
The Orioles, the defending world champs, are behind by two runs. They have two innings left now, and Steve Lass has retired the last eight batters he's faced. And Hendricks has reached in an error and doubled a strike. He has one of the two hits off Lass. Buford single in the third, Hendricks doubled in the fifth. And again, the shift on against Hendricks, with Hernandez, a shortstop, playing in back of second base. Inside a ball, one and one. The tired bullpen is quiet right now. Glass has struck out five and walked two. Inside, ball two. Those walks were early, though. He walked Buford in the first and Brooks Robinson in the second. He's not walked the batter since. In the oil bullpen, Dobson and McNally are warming up. That ball is a fair ball. No, foul ball. They call it foul. Foul ball called by the first base umpire, Ed Sudol. Two and two to Ellie Hendricks. So there are the two 20 game winners, Dobson and McNally. Yesterday, they had a real oddity of baseball when the Orioles used three pitchers and everyone was a 20 game winner in one game. They have a 20 game winner on the mound today and two 20 game winners warming up in the bullpen. But I think the real story in this series, we'll tell you about it here in just a moment, or what are the real highlights? 2-2 pitch to Hendrick. And he drives a base hit in the left center. I think one of the real highlights, Chuck, is after the failure of their leading pitcher, Doc Dallas, a 19-game winner, the Pirates with six different starters with sort of odds and ends pitchers. 10-game winners, 12, 15-game winners, had battled those four 20-game winners to a standstill and right now hold a slight edge. Uh, that has to be the story, Kurt. Everyone knew the Pirates could and would hit. Everyone accepted the fact that they defensively could play a game, too. But no one expected the Pirate pitching to be what it has been in this series. Magnificent. Mark Belanger went into a double play, flying out. Right one to him. Two runs, four hits for Pittsburgh. No runs, three hits for Baltimore. Last of the eighth inning. And you see in the background, Show Pay in the on-deck circle. He's going to pinch hit the playoff. One ball, one strike. Ellie Hendricks at first. Nobody out on the last of the eighth. So many hit a home run in the fourth for Pittsburgh. Pagan doubled in a run in the eighth. That's the scoring. One ball, one strike. Foul off the fist. One and two. And still no action in the Pittsburgh bullpen. There may be now, though. I see some stirring around out there. Yes, they're getting the cart out of the way, and I think somebody's going to start warming up. Looks like Luke Walker. One ball, two strikes. And there's a drive. Hendricks goes in the second. And the Orioles have the time runs on base in the last of the eighth. Chopay batting for Mike Cuellar. Hendricks at second. Belanger at first. Each team with four hits. Back-to-back single -back for the Orioles, and the Baltimore fans are roaring now. A ball to Chopay. This is the fifth time he's been up as a pitch hitter in the World Series, which ties a World Series record. He hasn't had a hit in four official times. A 
strike one and one. The Pirates are in tight. Let's see. They start warming up. Justy Walker and Justy now in the fire bullpen. Justy the right hander, Walker the left hander. Pirates are looking for the bun at the corners. A one-one pitch. He dumps it. It's a good punt. And it holds the runners up in the second and third. A perfect sacrifice by Chopin. Signaling to his infield. Walker made that, or uh, Glass made that throw to first. I think he would have had a real gamble trying to go to third. Sanguian had pointed to third. The catcher calling the play, though. You saw Sanguian point to third. You thought Glass could have got. Hendricks at third. Hendricks is at third now. Belanger at second, one out. Foul back by Buford, who's walked, singled, and flied out. Two to nothing. Pittsburgh. Baltimore's big threat of the game in the last of the eighth inning. There's Hendricks at third. And Belanger at second. Side of ball, one and one to Don Buford. And either McNally, the left hander, or Dobson, the right hander, will come in and pitch the ninth inning to Baltimore. One and one pitch. Foul back and blast to the head of him. One ball, two strikes. game such as we had yesterday. One ball, two strikes. The tying runs at second and third for Baltimore. One out. Off-speed pitch is hit to Bob Robertson. A run will score. Steps on the bag. It's a two-to-one game. Over to third goes Belanger. Give Buford an RBI. Pittsburgh two, Baltimore one in the last of the eighth inning. Dave Johnson popped up trying to bunt, grounded the third, popped the short, 0 for 3. Yesterday he came up with a big hit when he looped the single in the left field in the seventh inning to tie the game. Don is playing shallow at third against him. Breaking pitch away, one and nothing. There's Pagan even with a bag. The Langers at third, two down. The Pirates two, the Orioles one. Check swing foul, one and one. to Dave Johnson. In there, strike two. One ball, two strikes. The lander at third, two down. Now Blast wants to talk to San Guillen.
Stay tuned right after this game for NFL football, either Cleveland at Cincinnati or San Diego at Denver, right here on NBC. One ball, two strikes to Dave Johnson. Belanger at third, two down. Inside. Two and two. It's a ground ball in the hole of short. And then he throws right there with a throw. Boy, oh, he's played a steady shortstop in this series. And the Orioles pick up a run. Two hits, no errors, one left. At the end of eight, Pittsburgh two, Baltimore one. Time? All right, I'll be there. Okay. and warms up, let's sit down to Tony Kubek. Baseball Commissioner Bowie Kuhn has a very special guest in his box today. Mr. Commissioner, why don't you introduce him to our baseball fans? Tony and fans, we're very honored to have with us today the distinguished Secretary of the United States, uh, William P. Rogers. Secretary Rogers, what are some of the standout and highlights of this ballgame for well, you? I think that uh, Clemente home run has to be the standout today, although the pitching has been great. Uh, Blast has been uh, wonderful, and the whole game has been excellent. It's a real pitcher's duel. You know, after yesterday's game, Mr. Commissioner, I thought there was going to be no more drama, but it's right back again today in the seventh game. I think the drama is as high in this as it was yesterday. I don't know if we can stand it much longer. It's Secretary really? Rogers, Commissioner Bowie Kuhn, thank you so much. Good to have you here, sir. Great to be here. Great series. Thank you all. It's back upstairs. All right, this is Pat Dobson. Who in the ninth inning will face Gene Pines, Roberto Clemente, and Bob Robertson. A couple of final pro football scores. The Washington Redskins won their fifth in a row, shutting out the St. Louis Cardinals 20 to nothing. And the Miami Dolphins murdered the New England Patriots today 41 to 3. Two final scores. Right after this game, we'll have NFL football on NBC, Cleveland at Cincinnati, or San Diego at Denver. Gene Kleins has flied out, bounced to the pitcher, and struck out. The Pirates have two runs and four hits. The Orioles have one run and four hits. Dobson in with a strike. He won 20 and lost eight this year. His third appearance in this World Series. Look out. One and one. He's pitched six innings, given up 11 hits in this series. And an earned run average of 4.50. His second relief appearance. Two and one. If you join us late, Flamini hit a home run in the fourth. Nobody on with two out over the left center field wall. In the eighth for the Pirates, Van Gien, Estadio single, and Pagan doubled him home. And Estadio was going on the pitch. And back a second, Belanger's throw, and time. One down. Roberto Clemente coming up. If the Pirates would hold the lead in the last of the ninth inning, 
This could be his last chance at tying the World Series record. He's getting an ovation here in Baltimore. He's been, as he has in his entire career, a total ball player in this series. Running, throwing, fielding, and batting. He has 12 hits. The record is 13 by Bobby Richardson and Lou Brock. They each had 13 hits in a series. Seven game series. Ball one to Clemente. He grounded the short in the first. Homeward in the fourth. Slide out to center field in the seventh. And if your Oriole fans are looking ahead, they'll have Powell, Frank Robinson, and Rettman up in the last of the ninth inning. Ball two to Clemente. He's had 11 years between World Series. And he's made them count. At the age of 37, he has burning pride. He wanted to have a great series, and he had it. Three balls and no strikes to Clemente. There's a strike to him, three and one. The way he's played here, you take a look at that body and see the way he still throws and runs. He should play for another two or three years at least, unless he gets some hard luck injuries. Three balls and a strike. Three and two now. One out, nobody on. Ninth inning, the Pirates leading two to one. And a foul, three and two to Clemente. Fouls are back. We are pitched eight innings. Two runs and four hits. We are struck out six and did not walk a batter. The blast was just a little bit better. Three and two. Two down for Pittsburgh in the ninth. The batter is Bob Robertson, who's lined to third, grounded to third, and struck out. 0 for 3. Well, you're going to be hearing a lot about this fellow in the future. He's hit six home runs in postseason play for the Pirates. A strike. And he hit 26 during the year. 25 years old. Fouls the breaking pitch back. Strike two to Bob Robertson. Two down, nobody on. On deck, Manny Sanguian. The Pittsburgh runs have been knocked in today by old timers, 37 year old Clemente, 36 year old Pagan. Ball one strike two. And both born and live in Puerto Rico. One ball, two strikes to Bob Robertson. Serve hangs inside there and two and two. Two outs, base is empty. Three and two to Robertson. Pittsburgh ahead, two to one in the top of the ninth inning.
Lashes it in the left field. Buford over there for it. Robertson makes the turn and holds. Base hit number five for Pittsburgh. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. Number 35, Manny Sanchez. And back here in Baltimore, this is Kurt Gowdy with Chuck Thompson and Tony Kubek. There's Manny Sanguin is up now. He is single in three times. Ball one, and uh, it looks like he's going to leave the series as a leading base stealer in this series, a catcher. Remember that the NFL football will follow this World Series game. There's a strike. As soon as we're through here with the seventh game of the series, we'll be switching to either Cleveland at Cincinnati or San Diego at Denver, NFL football. Bob Robertson at first, two down. Pirates leading two to one. Ninth inning. Foul back, a ball and two strikes to San Guillen. This will be a time call. One ball, two strikes is the count. Two and two. Dave McNally and Eddie Watt have been warming up in the Oriole bullpen. Tough chance for Brooks Robinson. The throw. Big at first base. And once again, for a catcher, the outstanding speed of Sanguin is something. He beat it out. Robertson's at second. Sanguin's at first. Watch him leg this one out now. By Dobson, charged by Brooks Robinson, who makes a good play on this. But Sanguin at Put on the bag just before the ball popped into Booth Powell's mitt, and Earl Weaver's to the mound. That is the 11th hit for San Guillen in the series. who have just been a hitter all the way in the minor leagues and major leagues. In his background, Dobson is coming out. And we're going to have Willie Stargell up. We may have Dave McNally now, a left-hander, coming on to pitch for him. And while we have a break in the action here at Baltimore, the score in the ninth inning, Pittsburgh 2 and Baltimore 1. Dave McNally pitched a third of an inning yesterday. Came in in a tenth inning and received credit for the victory. And he's on now with two outs in the top of the ninth inning. And while he warms up, let's go down to Tony. If the Pittsburgh Pirates are to become the 1971 World Champions, it's not going to be an easy job. In the last half of the ninth inning, Boog Powell, Frank Robinson, Merv Rettenman, and then, of course, Brooks Robinson, if she should get to the plate. 
So far, Blast and the pitching in this ballgame has been just exceptional. Cuellar was breezing along. He got his screwball in the groove. He got in a little bit of trouble. The defense has been superb. And it would be fitting if no more runs are scored in this ballgame than the great Roberto Clemente, who hit the home run to give him the lead to start the ballgame. Back upstairs. And look at that Earl Weaver pacing in that Baltimore dugout. Willie Stargell has struck out twice, singled, and scored from first base. He was running on a pitch when Pagan doubled over the head of Merv Rettman in the eighth inning. The ball was cut off in front of the plate by Boog Powell. Runners on first and second for Pittsburgh now, two down. Ground ball to Dave Johnson. And they're out of the inning. Sargo grounds out in the top of the ninth. No runs for Pittsburgh. Two hits. There were no errors, and they left two. And so we're coming to the last of the ninth inning with a score. Pittsburgh two, Baltimore one. Steve Blass of Canaan, Connecticut now will pitch to Boog Powell, Frank Robinson, and Merv Rettman. At the present time, nobody is warming up in the Pittsburgh bullpen. Blass had a shutout until the eighth inning when he gave up a run. Blass has struck out five. He's walked two. He's not walked a batter since the second. He's allowed four hits, three singles and a double. Boog Powell struck out, grounded out, and struck out. They keep that shift on against him. Last curves him for a strike. If the Pirates hang on, they'll be the fifth team in World Series history to lose the first two games of the series and come back to win the World Championship. One strike to Powell. Nine away, one and one. The Sun trying to come through for the first time today. One ball, two strikes. Baltimore trailing two to one. Powell leading off last of the ninth inning. And the curve misses two and two. change up that slow curve. It's been an effective pitch for him. Two and two to Powell. Big bounding ball to Dave Cash is second. One away. To our production staff and engineering staff all during our game of the week season and during this World Series in New York, Los Angeles, and Chicago. We want to 
give them congratulations and a deep thank you for the excellent work they've done all year, our NBC crew. One out. Frank Robinson has gone hitless. He's flying to right, struck out, and popped up. And he hits a pop up in the shallow left center. Hernandez, the shortstop, is back. Two down. One more out. And the Pirates are world champs, but that's always the hardest out to get. Now here is Merv Rettman. He's grounded a short, grounded a third, grounded a short. And a special thanks to Alan Roth, our statistician, our stage manager, Jim O'Gorman. Pirates two, Baltimore one. If Blast gets another out, you'll see a sight. He's very emotional, and he just might explode out there. There's a strike. Now keep your eyes on him. He pitched a three-hitter at Pittsburgh to beat the Orioles. He's pitched a four-hitter so far today, and he's leading two to one. There's a drive up the middle. Hernandez in back of the bag. He's going. Jackie Hernandez. Look at Blast. Blast has pitched the Pirates to the World Championship. The Pirates, two games down, have come back and they come to 15 in the World, history, uh, World Series history to win the championship after losing the first two. And Jackie Hernandez, supposedly a weak member of the cast, an erratic shortstop, played brilliantly in this series. The surprise performer, Clemente, of course, San Guillen, the Pirates, maligned pitching staff, outpitched the 20 game winners of the Orioles. And that's the story to us in this series. And the Pirates outfielded the Orioles in the series. Here is the Pirates locker room. And Pittsburgh has won its fourth world championship. 1909, 1925, 1960, and again today. And while we wait to go back into the clubhouse of Pittsburgh, the final score, the Pirates, two runs, Six hits, one error. Baltimore, one run, four hits, and no error. I hear you, Lou Cassero. Pittsburgh the winner. Blass, of course, is the winning pitcher today, and Cuellar the loser. Clemente has been named the outstanding player of the series, as Sport Magazine will award him the Dodge Charger as the outstanding player. And now let's go down to the Pittsburgh clubhouse, the world champions. Thank you very much, Kurt Gotti. Well, here they are, a very hilarious group of people. The commissioner of baseball, one of the owners, Thomas P. Johnson, and of course, Danny Galbraith, Steve Blast, the winning pitcher. This place is pandemonium as the Pittsburgh Baseball Club came on to do it. And Commissioner, this has been a great World Series. And I know you have a presentation you'd like to make, sir, at this time. Yes, sir, I do. Danny? Danny Murtaugh stepping in here with Commissioner Bullock. Huh? Hey, we can handle this. This is the emblematic of the World Championship in 1971, and I think your team has earned it as a championship squad that came from behind to win like champions and beat the Baltimore Oils who had been the reigning champions. But I congratulate you and your players and Steve Blass and your whole club. Thank you, Commissioner. And I don't believe there's been a better played series in the, since I've been around anyway. I'm deeply grateful. Andy Murtaugh, let me step in here for just a moment. 1960, you performed the impossible and you did it again. Congratulations here in 1971. Thank you, Bob. Steve Blass, who pitched such a great game. Steve, coming in here with the uh, chairman of the board, Mr. John Galbraith. Steve, I know you just can't express yourself emotion-wise. You're all wrung out. I don't know what to say. <laughs> this is the biggest thrill that could ever happen. I, I don't believe it. From skinny kid from Falls Village, Connecticut. <laughs> yeah, well, not so skinny out there. You showed them all there was to show them, Steve. And was there any one moment in that ball game that had you really worried? There were several. I one when they had the two men on and then one 
hanging slider I threw to Davey Johnson that he popped up, uh, but he missed the pitch. I can't, I can't believe how many people have this kind of an opportunity. Well, you t you rose right to the occasion, and here with me right now, the greatest right fielder in the game of baseball, Roberto Clemente. Bobby, congratulations on a great World Series. Thank you, Bob. And before I, I say anything in English, I would I would like to say something for my mother and father in Spanish. En el día más grande de mi vida, para los nenes la bendición mía y que mis padres me echen mi bendición en Puerto Rico. Mr. and Mrs. Clemente, we love them too. Yeah, we understood you. Now here's the chairman of the board, Mr. John Galbraith. I know how thrilled you are, Mr. Galbraith. I can't say anything other than it's magnificent. Just magnificent. Danny will do the talking. Yes, and here's the president of the ball club, Danny Galbraith. Danny, well, as the president of the club, you now have come in like your father before you, 11 years before he won the championship as the president of the club. Now you're the president. I know that you can uh, go home with this one and really feel happy. Well, Bob, it's a great heritage to follow here with Dad. And the way these boys fought back, I think, shows the class of a, of a real winner. And I'm so happy for all of them, as well as the, the folks back in Pittsburgh that have been supporting us all the way. And there might be some rip snorting in Pittsburgh. And his honor the mayor, Pete Flaherty. Your honor, I know how thrilled you are at this. Well, we're very excited. The players deserve great credit. They got off the floor, and they brought this championship to Pittsburgh, and they deserve all the credit in the world. All right, may I present to his honor the excellency, the governor of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, the Honorable Milton Schaap. Oh, yeah. Boy, this is some day. I can't, even, I can't even talk. You're just yelling so hard. Well, it was a real great one. There's no question about that. And now we have Bruce Keeson. And Bruce, you're going home now. You were a victor in one of the games here. And you're going home by uh, the arrangements for the Baltimore Club of the Chartered Aircraft and a helicopter to get married tonight. Congratulations to you. That'll right. be a happy wedding night in All a right. lot of ways. All right, thank you. And thank you for everything you've done, too. you got a lot to do with it, I'm sure. All right, that's Bruce Keeson. Now we'll send it back up to Kurt Gowdy. All right, and uh, the jubilation continues in the Pirate Clubhouse. Of course, quiet disappointment over there to uh, Baltimore and their clubhouse, but a team that three years in a row has won 100 games. And uh, I agree with Danny Murtaugh. This is one of the best World Series we've had in a long time. Uh, again, Pittsburgh pitching after Doc Ellis, their 19-game winner, was Derek. They didn't use him the rest of the series. And with 8, 10, 12, 15 game winners, they allowed in that last five games only eight runs and just 21 hits in the last five games of the series. Blast and Keeson and Bryles, all of those uh, fellows pitching great ball. And, uh, of course, Clemente, Sanguian in the hitting department. Uh, a tremendous series. And uh, Baltimore nearly pulled it out again today when they came up with a run in the eighth inning. That was their big bid, but they couldn't tie it up. And blast very strong in the ninth inning. So the Pirates, after losing the first two games, come back to win the world championship. And our final score here today is Pittsburgh 2 and Baltimore 1. And now this is Kurt Gowdy, Chuck Thompson, Tony Kubek, and Bob Prince saying that the seventh game of the 1971 World Series has been brought to you by Chrysler Corporation. Extra care in engineering. Your host today, your local Dodge dealer by the two-bladed razor, the new Gillette Crack 2 Twin Blade Cartridge Shaving System, and by Phillips 66, the performance company. At Phillips 66, it's performance that counts. Now stay tuned for football, either Cleveland at Cincinnati or San Diego at Denver, right after station identification right here on NBC. NBC.